Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to look at some relays from a uh, Triumph TR7 and other British cars. These were very common on British cars, and you might be asking me, why are you looking at relays? Well, because my car wasn't starting, that's why. I would hit the ignition switch, and I just get a click sometimes. Sometimes I didn't get anything. So, researching some relays, we're going to test some relays here. Now, what's the difference between the black and the blue ones? They're not the same. They're not interchangeable. They might be in some circuits, but if you want to be 100% sure, unless you know the schematic of the circuit, don't interchange them because all of them have the coil from 85 to 86. So usually 85 is grounded or negative and 86 is the positive. They all, both the blue and the black ones, okay? Then let's call 30 the common and 30 is the common. But the black one is normally closed on the 87A contact. And then when you apply power to 85 and 86, it will disconnect the 87A and connect the 30 to the 87 contact. And then the 87A will be open with respect to the 30 contact. So this is a normally, uh, this is a normally closed, normally open, uh, or SP, single pole double throw, SPDT relay. Very common. And I was happy that I found some at Pep Boys for $4. $4. Um, they were on sale because they're usually like 9 and change. But guess what? You know, I was looking at the wrong relay. Just, so anyway, I'm changing relays and I'm changing the wrong one. So haste makes waste. Look at your schematic. Okay. So... The blue relay, how is it different from the black one? Well, look. Look at 86 and 85 is still a coil. But look. The uh, normally, the, the, common, the common terminal is not connected to anything. Whereas on the black one, it's connected to 87A when there's no power going to the relay. So this is called a normally open relay, okay? And uh, single pole, single throw. But when this is energized, it connects 30 to both 87 and 87A, okay? So that's the difference. The black one disconnects 87A and connects 30 to 50, okay? I'm sorry, 30 to 87. The blue one is always is open when it's de-energized, but when it's energized, it connects the 30 pin to both 87 and 87A. Okay, now we're going to uh, test these relays. Hold on. Okay, to test these relays, all you need is a DMM. Auto ranging is nice. Set to ohms. A 9-volt battery with a clip lead going to the negative, okay? This is always going to get connected to my pin 87. I'm sorry, 85, which is the low side of the coil. So when I do my testing, I'm simply going to be connecting this one to the 85 pin and then touching the positive of the battery to the 86 pin, okay? So let's look at a working relay. Um, I'm going to pause this and set up the, we'll test the black one first. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll test, we'll test this one first. Okay, so there's my, uh, the alligator lead is on 85. That's this right one. That's one side of the coil. Then we're going to keep touching the positive of the battery to this side which is 86 of the coil. Now, this is the normally closed one. So pin 30 is on the bottom. And pin 87A is kind of that center one. 
So I have a clip lead on pin 30 on the bottom and a clip lead on uh, 87A. Now, what do you expect the meter to read? Zero ohms. They're connected. They're connected, then there's no power going to the relay. Okay? Now, I'm going to take this and touch it. I'm going to energize this relay. It's hard to do this with two hands. Okay? So here we go. Ready? Uh, let me get you a good view here. And the meter goes to open or mega ohms. It should be a pure overload. There shouldn't really be any mega ohms. So this one could be on its way out, uh, but it should be a complete overload. Now, when I let go and de-energize, it goes back to zero. So when I connect it, listen, this is what they should sound like. Wait. All right, my battery's dead because I've been using this yesterday and today to test relay. So hold on. Let me just get a new battery. Hold on. Okay, I got the new battery and uh, let you listen to what this is what the relay should sound like. You know, you should be able to hear it. Oh, my wires are in the way. Hold on. Let me fix the wire. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that's what these sound like. So we check the normally closed contact. Let's test the normally open contact, which is open and then should close. Okay, so I still have my my negative on 85. My common is still on 30. and But I moved it from the normally closed center contact to the normally open contact. And as you could see, we're floating around in the mega ohms here. It should be an overload. So this is, so if this was a good relay, this should be a complete overload, open circuit. But let's see if it switches. Let me uh, switch hands here. Okay, so let's see. May see if we get our click. Energize the coil. Oh, fingers in the way. Okay, so you, we get out that. So uh, this is the overload. Then the normally open contact closes. So this is energized. Then I'm going to remove it. No, no power going to the relay. We go back to an open circuit. Power going to the relay. We go back to a short circuit on the 76 and 30 contacts. Okay, this is a short. Now, okay. But this relay may be bad, so that oh this 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 open circuit should really be OL or something like that. Hey, I'll disconnect the lead. This is what it should be. It should be that. So this one may be a little flaky. Okay, so that's the single pole double throw, or the uh, uh, normally closed, normally open five pin relay. Now let's get the blue one. Okay, I'm having trouble here. Okay, here's the blue one, okay? So I have my alligator clip on the coil negative, okay? Coil positive is where my thumb is, just opposite, okay? Let me try to, okay. Now I have my uh, ohmmeter, one, one's connected to 30, okay, which is one side of the switch. But what's different is, now look, on the normally closed, normally open relay, the black one, this pin here, which is pin 87A, look, it's not shorted. It's not a, oh, it's not a short circuit like on the, uh, on the black relay, which is a normally closed relay, nor is this top contact. 
So long story short, these blue ones have like a double normally open contact. So, so we're going to energize this, okay, with the battery. And we're going to see that once we energize it, this bottom terminal, okay, will get connected to both these top terminals. All right, so let's set up. So you just, I'm, I'm just going to connect uh, to the top one, but I'll, I'll show you both, okay? All right, so here's my battery. Maybe I could show you both, the meter and the... Okay, now watch. There we go. Can you see the meter? I let go. It goes to overload. Complete open circuit. Touching the contact. Nice click. Complete short circuit. Okay. Now, put the phone down. I'm right here. I'm not leaving you. Don't get nervous. We're in this together. Okay, so now I simply moved the meter to the the other copper colored one, the, the kind of the middle contact. And look, overload. Touch the battery. Oh, that was, I wasn't holding it on there good. Hold on. Oh, that was nasty. Hold on. Sorry about that. There we go. And we have a beautiful short circuit. See? Okay, pause. Now, now the whole reason uh, for me doing all this testing is I'm going to show you something really quick. The first thing you want to do when you test the relay is test the coil resistance. So let's do that. Okay, so to test the coil resistance, put your meter on ohms and connect your leads from 86 to 85. And on these Lucas relays, they're usually around 52, 55 ohms, something like that. So you can see we have a beautiful 55 ohm relay coil. Now, just because your coil is good doesn't mean your relay is good. Just don't forget that little tidbit there. Because contacts could be dirty. They could be carbonized. And they could, you know, not make any contact. They could be corroded. So even though you hear the relay clicking, it doesn't mean it's making contact. So incidentally, this relay was part of my AC system, which my car has the AC all disconnected. But the AC relay is a blue one, just like the starter relay. Okay, so let's look at the starter relay's coil resistance. Okay, so once again, I'm connected from pin 85 to 86, which is the coil. But look at this complete disaster here. One mega ohm. So this coil is an open coil. This is a dead relay. This is why my TR7 was only starting some of the times. So what I'm doing now is just swapping. Well, I'm not swapping. I'm going to use my AC relay because uh, she's in good condition. Okay. Um, but this one's a goner. Because look at the coil. It should be like 52 ohms, something like that. And when you apply power to this, you could hardly hear it click. So let's do that. Hold on. Okay, so once again, I have my battery negative going to the uh, one side of the coil, the 85 side of the coil. And I'm going to try to balance my phone here. Yeah, okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. So then I'm going to take my 9-volt battery and touch it. Look, it, it, listen, listen closely. It makes the slightest sound. Listen. So it's dead. Remember, these things are loud enough you could hear these if you're a few, few feet away from them. Now it's not even doing it. So, so, uh, so there you go. That's how you test these relays. The blue Lucas relays have a different schematic than the black ones. The black ones are normally closed, normally open relay. This is pretty common. The blue one is a normally open, but it has a double normally open contact that 
the 87 and 87A contacts. So when this is energized, 30 is connected to both 87 and 87A at the same time right there, see? So it kind of, so you have 12 volts here, say, on 30, and then when you energize the relay coil, both 87 and 87A will be energized. So you could kind of power two circuits with it. Uh, I'm not really sure how this is working in, in my car, but I just wanted to let you know that it is different than the, than these, which are more common. So I can't really use the one in Pep Boys I bought because it doesn't have this double common, this double normally open contact here. It, it just has one normally open, which is 87. See? So they're not, they're really not interchangeable. So, so here's my old starter relay. It's, it's kaput. Well, I hope this helped you. Um, just because this five pin configuration is uh, very popular. Even, you know, you go to auto parts store, you'll see tons of these things. Uh, although some of the new ones I mentioned have an 80 ohm coil. That That's okay though. But just because they're all five pin does not mean that they're electrically the same. So make sure that you're, you know, you're replacing your relays with the right ones. Um, I did find these, look, this, the, the blue ones on British Parts Northwest uh, for, tw for $28. I mean, it, it's a little pricey, but you know what? If you want to keep the original, then so be it. You have an original Lucas Relay. All right, everyone. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say is you can use a 9-volt battery because the, a car system is typically 12 volts, and uh, basically 9 volts is close enough. Or you can use a DC power supply that's 12 volts to test your uh, to test the switching of your relays. Um, the only problem with the 9 volts is if you have a dead 9-volt, it's not going to switch your relay, so you may think your relay is bad, but it's... You know, so that's that's a whole variable you may want to avoid. So make sure you use a new 9-volt and, you know, just don't keep it there long. Don't touch the contact long because it's a very tiny battery and it's easy just to really kill it because these coils take a good amount of current that a little baby 9-volt is not going to be able to uh, sustain for too long. Okay, have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye.